Welcome, everybody, from the great Northern Plains region. So good to see you. Grateful that we could have Kirsten here, my dear friend. And we're grateful that we could have Harry with us as he helps us kind of navigate the end of First Nephi, as well as reviewing some doctrinal mastery that we've done so far. And so, Harry, thanks for joining us. Where where would you like to begin? All right. So there's a lot of things to teach in from First Nephi 16 to 22. But for sake of kicks and giggles, we're going to go all the way over to the Doctrinal Mastery Review. So, Book of Mormon, Doctrinal Mastery Review number two, um, talks about the importance of memorizing the key scriptural passages and references, and uh, gives some, some good ideas as you go through here, what you might think about doing. I want to focus on this memory cards. Uh, review activity. It talks about creating 12 doctrinal mastery cards uh, and putting the reference on one side and the keywords out of the scriptures on the other, cutting them up and uh, letting the kids use them as flashcards. Fan of flashcards, um, all different types. And I've used some different types of flashcards in, in the past. And so I want to show you what I usually start with. And then I'll show you uh, kind of where I go from there. And we'll play with Brandon and Chris for a minute and okay. see if they know their doctrinal masteries. So we'll I see. I got one down. You got what? I got one down, First Nephi 3.7. That's good. I hope you know. I hope you know that. So this is a flashcard I've used in the past. Um, and it's uh, visual. Uh, on the front is... is a picture on the back is the reference in the key. And so, Brandon, what is the what is the reference for this scripture? First Nephi three seven. Whew, thanks How for do we know? How do we know it's First Nephi three? Because he oh, oh three rings, three rings, three rings, and three. There's one Nephi. Oh. <laughs> First Nephi 3. There Seven we go. You find in there, First Nephi 3. And then with the clue of the plates, you just kind of have to know the story. But the key words would be? Go and do. Yep, I will go and do the things the Lord hath commanded. First Nephi 3, 7. Yes? Uh, and then how about this one? Uh-oh. Kirsten, you get to go? <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> how many Nephites? Second Nephi. Yep. Chapter. They both bit out of it, so two. Two. Second Nephi chapter two. Do you know any doctrinal mastery in Second Nephi chapter two, Kirsten? I should, but uh, there are a couple. <laughs> Adam felt that they might be a minute, they might have joy. Now let's go back to our picture. How do we know it was Adam? <laughs> the apple? He ate the apple. Yes. All right. Or is it an Adam's apple? I'm, I'm... Yeah, Adam's apple. Okay, what's this one? Brandon, back to you. Two Nephites, second Nephi, two choices. So chapter two, and it's verse 27. Um, we can choose between choose. life and liberty and captivity. Liberty and eternal life or captivity and death. Yes. Yep. Um, and so these are just really silly uh Silly little cards that, that have been created years ago. I, I used these back in the day. How about this one? Yeah, how about this one? Uh oh. Oh, uh, that looks scary. He's got his uh, eye yeah. on you. <laughs> yeah, so it's so what's the book? I single to the glory of God. Nope, you're that's you're good thinking though. <laughs> it's Mosiah. <laughs> Mosiah. I, you, you got Mosiah chapter, <laughs> chapter what? Two. Two keywords? Uh, when we are in the service of God, we're in the service of others. Very good. Very good. Yes. Mm. And so you'll see any of the of the cards have the eye on it, right? This one's kind of creepy, right? This is a Mosiah chapter. Three. Three. Natural it, man. He's angry. Natural man is an enemy to God. And then, uh, you know... This one's one of my favorite ones. Uh, what's the book? Helaman. Helaman. You know, Hela, your doctors, Helaman. No, right? <laughs> Helaman. Chapter five, build your foundation on Christ. I haven't edited all of these. 
this one's probably the most sacrilegious of them all. <laughs> uh, but the silly things, right? You can have your kids, uh, you can yeah. have your kids make cards and you can copy them. Uh, you can create some of these on your own. You can do whatever you want. But I am a fan of using, um, I found that most, 90%, 80% of, of the, the students I used to teach um, really did well with the visual, connecting it to. But that's not where you want to quit, right? I like to start with these, get them trying to memorize the 12 or the 24, or the 25, whatever I was teaching that year. And... Uh, and then I would get them to where they can get rolling on just regular old flashcards, right? Yep. So what is Adam Feldman might be? What's the what's the book 80, in the twenty five, right? And and I wouldn't care so much about the twenty five as the second Nephi chapter two because I because I believe in in teaching my kids to mark the references, right? And so as long as they can get to second Nephi two, they can find the scripture that they need to teach their family to teach as, as missionaries. And so I, I like to do that. And I'd use the, the big flashcards. I'd use a projector. I'd use little ones and, uh, and mix that up. And that was very helpful. You can play games. Um, but, but always we want to try to deepen their understanding of the scriptures as we're doing the flashcards. So inevitably I would be going through some flashcards. Where are we going? Infinite atonement. Alma 34. Good job. Alma. See the owl? Alma, <laughs> see the owl. I was gonna say, Alma. I don't remember there being an owl there when he. I know there wasn't an owl. Know. There was an angel. I don't know, a little sacrilegious, whatever. But <laughs> what? What's right here? You see 34. the thirty-four. Thirty-four. Alma thirty-four. And uh, do we remember the verses on this one? There must needs be an infinite atonement, right? Well, that's the. That's oh, the actual the, verses. The actual Sorry, verse. nine and ten. I don't I don't really know. I should know such things, but I don't. So and I haven't changed these. So Alma 34, 9 and 10. You're correct. So that's where nice. we're headed. So so we've done the flashcard, we've shown it, and then I say, okay, well, let's go there. Let's go check this one out. So would you find it? And as soon as you find it, stand up, turn around and sit down. Mark Sego. <laughs> go there. Yes, all of us. We're going. Alma. Alma. 34. I found it. Do I get to stand up and turn around yes, and sit down? Yes, hurry. I'm not there yet. I'm slow. So there we go. Yeah, I got it. Oh, see, you're like all my students. Won't stand up and turn around. <laughs> then you'll see that I'm in shorts right now. I no. know that would be bad. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm a 34, 9 and 10. I'm up. Okay, I made it. So I've got there. Now uh I'll read it. And then would you two just just pick out a favorite word or phrase? From this doctoral master. For it's expedient that an atonement should be made. For according to the great plan of the eternal God, there must be an atonement made, or else all mankind must unavoidably perish. Yea, all are hardened, yea, all are fallen and are lost, and must perish, except it be through the atonement which is expedient should be made. For it is expedient that there should be a great and last sacrifice. Yea, not a sacrifice of man, neither of beast, neither of any manner of fowl, for it shall not be a human fact sacrifice but it must be an infinite and eternal sacrifice. So a word or a phrase that, you, that jumped out to you today, either of you, shout it out. What do you see there? Great plan of the eternal God. So why? Why? Because I think President Nelson has spoken about the great plan of happiness so frequently, and he keeps bringing up the great plan Um I love how that it connects the atonement with the great plan and how the atonement is the atonement of Jesus Christ is central to that great plan. Love it. That's a phenomenal connection and a great doctrine. And then back to you, Brandon. Expedient, meaning as the Book of Mormon is the keystone of our religion, the atonement of Jesus Christ is the keystone of the plan of salvation. I love it. Um, I had a sister missionary in, in one of my institute classes the other day, and right now her big thing is that she's got a dictionary app, and every time she gets a word like that, she. But but if we take our finger right, because we like footnotes, and we highlight the word expedient, um, we can click define right, and and what's the definition of that, Brandon? What do you see there? Convenient and practical, although possibly improper or immoral. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 
That's weird. <laughs> so what do we do with that? Uh, the next new definition. additive convenient, meaning the atonement is convenient to the plan. Convenient, necessary, essential, yeah. like Kirsten already said. And so as I do a game or as we're doing flashcards, sometimes I'd stop, have them do a quick scripture chase, but don't just let them scripture chase it. Make sure they have it marked, have them read it out loud, pick a word or a phrase. And all it is is repetition. It yeah. gives you a chance to, 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 to dive just a little bit into the scriptures. You can ask some follow-up questions, even have just a mini little lesson as kids are showing up early in the morning, right? And kids are slow working in. Flashcards are a great thing to do before you really get rolling in your lesson. Um, just an, another tool that I've used in the past. Past, so I am a flat a fan of flashcards. I am a fan of the picture ones and the fan of just the regular ones. After a while, those kids will know them, and the, and you, you you get past the goofy pictures and you just get to the memorization. Is there anything um, you awesome teachers would add? I would just say the earlier you can establish all of these flashcards the better because it really does lend itself very nicely so to so many games whether it's slapjack scavenger hunt king of the hill queen of the hill like there's so many things that you can do with the flashcards if you've got it established early enough yeah balloon volleyball item on the altar i mean there's tons of different activities and you can even deepen it as and, and create understanding and connection to the Savior in those games uh, if if you're willing to stop and pause for a little bit and then get back to it. And uh, it's it's a great way to keep kids engaged. Yeah, uh, Brandon, I'm glad you said that because it reminded me of my good friend Kelly who passed away, a, a great religious educator here in the North. Um, he was adamant about this. He would, he would encourage, he would bribe his stake teachers, his called teachers, uh, to with steak dinners if they would just memorize them and help their students memorize the scriptures early on in the semester because when you do that then you as a teacher have them in your gray matter and you can incorporate them better into your lessons yeah. and you'd be amazed how the teach how those kids will start bringing them up as they know them oh there is a scripture i know a scripture that relates to that and uh without doing that early on and continually reviewing you won't have that, that that those connection to those essential doctrines. Yeah. Kirsten, is there anything you'd add? Well, I actually have a question, if that's okay. Is yeah. this something you have found success in having the students come up with their own pictures and print their own or draw them, or is it better to have them pre-done? Yes. <laughs> My opinion is do the pre-done and then just say, but if you find a better solution for what you want to do, then do it. But starting that way and saying, hey, everybody come up with their own, you're going to get 5% that will actually do the work. So have it for all of them and then say, but if you want to come up with your own pictures that make more sense to you and you don't like the owl that smokes, then do, do your own. But yep. I would do it for them, pay the price. And, and and another way, I mean, there's millions of ways to skin the cat. You could also have groups of kids and make sure one good artist is in there and have them draw a really nice one and then print it so it's more customized. And, you know, give the examples. But me, I'm like Brandon. I was easy. I wanted to get this done quick. I didn't want to spend the time, and I'm not an artist. And uh, so I, I used pre-done ones and just got them rolling on them. To talk about one more thing. Um, when you go into these um, different uh, teaching for this week, the 16th through the 22, um, it is a lot of scripture. Yeah. Um, this is where I become very grateful for curriculum writers. And this is where they help me prepare my lesson a lot faster than me having to do it. Because if I had to read through all of the scriptures, in, in from 16 to 22, and the chapters are very long, and figure out it all for myself how I'm going to approach these lessons, it, it would be a, a long lesson prep. And I don't know how you two feel about it, but sometimes, I, my, as a general rule, I like to prep my lessons by reading the block and then going to the curriculum. But when I hit, when, I'm, when my back's against the wall, or if I hit a section like this, that's just so long, I, I cheat. I don't know if it's cheating, but 
I go to the curriculum first and I look at what they've done. And uh, I am very, very impressed with the one, two, three, four outlines they have given us. Um, our area director, um, Elder Zach Evans, um, has said that we want to help our students have a converting experience. I, I would just urge you, do not try to teach all of this. There's too much in the boat trip and the Leahona and the sections in Isaiah. There's no way you're going to do it in one shot. We've got to narrow it down to something that's real and relevant. And if you look here, the Leahona, a guide in the wilderness, that lesson is, is all about following the Spirit and the promptings of the Spirit. Phenomenal, very relevant to kids. Um, acting uh, in faith in difficult situations. Nephi's in a bunch of difficult situations, very real and relevant. Our students are in, in, in hard situations. Have a great conversation about that. And, and did I look to my God during trials, right? All of our students have trials. And so they've done the work for you. Use what they have there and make it real and relevant to the conversation. Last thing I just want to say, First Nephi 16.7, they have a great... They have a great suggestion here right at the beginning. It talks about having, this may be a good time to follow up on your personal scripture study. Um, they're, they're using 1 Nephi 19.23, mm. um, which is a phenomenal scripture, that likening the scriptures unto us. Um, this is a great time to stop and say, how's your, how's your personal scripture study goals going? And are, are, are we being effective in that? And I hope that our call teachers that we're all talking to our students about their personal scripture study goals and helping them continually uh, work on that. Because if we can get these kids reading the Book of Mormon every day, that's going to connect them to the Savior more um, than about anything. So if there's anything I wouldn't miss, it would be this review, First Nephi 19, 23, and then I would roll right into these awesome ideas with group work and connecting everything. So anyhow, that's that's my thoughts. Brandon, Kirsten, anything you would add to, to, to those? I, just, I really liked, oh, go ahead, Brandon. Nope, you first. I really liked, um, honestly, what Harry said, the curriculum for this week is phenomenal. I loved how when we're learning about the Leahona, how it has different methods and ways to teach it. It gives you three different ways to teach how the Leahona is a guide. Um, and how relevant is that to our students today? that having the Holy Ghost as our guide. I particularly liked the classroom setup where you spread out the pictures, um, especially if you have a class that's a little more restless, where you can have an activity in the middle and have them go find the Leahona and the different scriptures that it talks about and expresses those. So great curriculum this week. You kind of stole almost what I was going to say. Um, the relevancy of these chapters is pretty huge. We're, we're about to jump into some Isaiah chapters for quite a while in Second Nephi and the end of this, where we're going to be kind of reverting back to like last year with the New Testament, where we're just mainly reading and trying to figure things out. But these stories are super relevant, and I wouldn't miss them. Don't miss the stories. Don't miss the opportunity to take a story and then say, that was his story. Now, what's your story? What's been your bow-breaking experience? What's been one of your Leahonas? You know, what's been something that you've been asked to build that you needed to constantly go back up in the mountain and say, Lord, help me build my testimony. Help me build my uh, mission papers. Help me build my whatever it is, my family. Um, there's just so much relevancy in these chapters that though it's a lot, just boil down it to a, a story and make that story help it be relevant to them. So because you're going to hit a dry spot. I'm just telling you right now. You're going to hit a dry spot where we're jumping into more just chapters that are just talking versus telling stories. And so really hit these stories hard. Yeah. And just second witness, first Nephi 1923, right? Um, liken. <laughs> liken all scriptures unto us. Yeah. I mean, that's the introduction to Isaiah, but it's a great lead in to these stories and connecting them to their lives and the hard things they try, you know, and uh, super fun. Fun. Thank you, Harry. We sure appreciate you. Those Dr. Mass reviews are critical. They honestly is the spice to our teaching. And uh, when we have a good experience with Dr. Mass reviews, it helps everything else kind of go smoothly. And so thank you for reminding us to get this set up early and, and to use flashcards and 
Thank you, Kirsten, for your comments and uh, what you've added to it. And teachers, we just love you. We sure appreciate you. Thank you for doing all that you're doing to bless these youth. And um, let us know, let your coordinators know how we can best help you and what more things that you would like to hear in these podcasts. So thank you so much and have a great week of teaching.